This video is to help you complete the second of these labs where we're titrating sodium bicarbonate. Uh, in this particular lab, the sodium bicarbonate was diluted with powdered sugar. And the purpose of this lab was for you to measure the percent of sodium bicarbonate in the powder. The powders are labeled A, B, C, and D. And the worksheet that you will be completing for this lab looks like this, where it has a place for your sample ID and then your work. Lower on the page is a second sample ID and your data collection and calculations. And then on the also, back of that, uh, a place for your third and fourth samples. This is going to be sample A. And the weighing of the samples is very similar to what we did before, except that because these are diluted somewhat with an inert powder, we need to weigh more of it. So we're shooting for somewhere close to 3 grams. And so for sample number one, I have 3.184 grams. There's 3.046. And the final sample number three, 2.997. So now we've weighed our first three samples for uh, this lab. This is sample A. 3.184 grams, 3.046 grams, 2.997 grams. That is our three samples. So now the burette has been rinsed. I opened the valve to fill it with titrant. And I'm adjusting it to zero now before I begin my titration using a pipette to set it right on the zero line. This is the first sample for sample A, unknown A. I'm going to put in three drops of our indicator and some water to help dissolve the solids and make sure they're all washed down to the bottom of the flask. in about 20 milliliters of our titrant to start with. This is the first of these samples so I'm not really sure how much it's going to use yet. So we're going to be cautious here. And I still have quite a bit of undissolved solids so I can probably put in a another milliliter or two and it turned back right away and that turned back right away as did that okay and it's still taking more lots of fizzing still A little slower there, so we're going to slow down on our addition. We're getting close. In fact, that might be an endpoint there. Get everything washed down in there. It is just, just looking like it wants to go. Just the quickest drop I can. That is the end point right there. And that end point appears to be oh, just above 32. Just above 33, I'm sorry. I'm going to call it 
32.95 milliliters. This is sample two for unknown A. That might be it right there. It looks good. Everything washed off the sides to make sure. Let's call that the end point right there. And that looks like 31.55 we're going to call that just below the halfway mark, so 31.55 milliliters. This is sample 3 of unknown A. That looks like an end point there. Sure, everything is down in there in the reactant area. And the endpoint measurement is 31.0, right on the 31 line. So I'm going to write down 31.0. I have been a uh, dumping these flasks in the sink and rinsing them with distilled water and then I want to just dry the inside of the neck so when I add the new uh, sample to them it doesn't stick. I want it to drop down to the bottom of the flask rather than stick to the, the side of the neck. So I'm drying those necks in between samples before I refill them. So the way for sample B, C, and D is going to proceed very similar to what we did for sample A, in fact, the same way. And so I'm just going to do some more cutting here on the video so you don't have to watch every single step of it. So 3.076 for sample 1 of B. Sample 2 of B is 3.014. And sample 3 of unknown B is 3.026 grams. One thing I want to point out when I'm doing this titrating is I don't want that tip down where it'll hit the flask. So I'll just move the burette up a little bit so that when you're swirling you don't hit the end of the burette and possibly break it. This is unknown B, sample one. Just a really quick little splash. Not quite. Okay, that's it. It turned colors there. And unknown B, sample one. 22.5 milliliters. 22.5 milliliters. Okay, this is the second sample of unknown B. And there we have it. 22.5. And this is unknown B sample three. It looks like it was 21.9 milliliters. In looking at the three samples from uh, unknown B, it appears that the first one lost its color with sitting, so it may have been under titrated a little bit. Sample 2 is just turning like it should be. And sample 3 looks like it was over titrated just a little bit. Something to think about when you're doing your calculations. These samples will be from unknown C. Sample 1, 
3.146 grams. Sample 2, 3.070 grams. Sample number 3, 3.018 grams. Unknown C, sample 1. The camera is a little bit high for this one. You should always have your eyes level with the line where you're reading. So I'm down a little lower here. And I'm seeing 35.4 milliliters looking straight across the meniscus. 35.4. And this is C, sample 2. And the reading is 34.5 milliliters. This is unknown C, sample 3. Oh yeah. And the reading is 33.2 milliliters. This is unknown D, sample 1, 3.551 grams. D, sample 2, 3.562 grams. D, sample 3, 3.540 grams. This is the first sample of unknown D. And we have our color change at 33.25 milliliters. 33.25 milliliters. Just finishing up with unknown D sample 2. There we are. And the reading is 33.5, excuse me, 33, yes, 33.55 milliliters. 33.55 milliliters. And this is the third sample of unknown D. Okay, unknown D, sample 3, and the number is 33.2 milliliters. Okay, here's a shot of the data that we collected for these four samples. For unknown A, these are the three masses, and these are our three volumes in liters, as indicated. Down here is sample B with the three masses and the three volumes of titrant. The titrant was 0 0.875 molar. The molar mass of sodium bicarbonate is 84.0059 grams per mole. For sample C, the same titrant was used. There are the masses. There are the volumes we recorded. And for sample D, there are the masses. I wrote down the volumes in milliliters, so those will have to be converted to liters before you do your calculations. It's a simple move of the decimal point. Shouldn't be a problem. For each sample that you calculate, follow the directions in the uh, packet that you have to find the moles of HCl used. Uh, the mole ratio in the equation is 1 to 1. So when you find the moles of HCl used, that's also the moles of sodium bicarbonate you titrated. 
multiply that number of moles times the molar mass and that gives you the weight or the mass of the sodium bicarbonate that you titrated. This mass divided by the total mass of the sample and then times 100% gives you your weight percent of sodium bicarbonate. So this number divided by this number times 100 gives you your weight percent. Once you have these three numbers, add them together, divide the total by three, and you have your average weight percent of sodium bicarbonate.